Hello, my name is Robbie Fitzwater. I own and operate Marketing Rhythm. We help e-commerce businesses with retention marketing, basically email marketing and SMS marketing. So going into the holiday season, everybody's wondering, like, what do we do? How do we do? What, do, how, what, what should we be thinking about? So we wanted to walk you through some of the some of the things I want you guys to avoid a little bit. So again, this time of the year has a lot of insights and a lot of great opportunities. This is a time of year where so many e-commerce businesses really want to maximize their efforts and really kind of cash in on a lot of the work they've been doing. Because again, if you you're an email marketer or you're a marketer in the e-commerce space, like you've been farming the entire year, you've been farming, and this is right right now. This is when you really want to harvest. This is when some of the businesses have their biggest years, months of the year, and you really want to take advantage of as much of that as possible. So in the past, like again, when I was leading a um, leading a large e-commerce business. Um, the holidays, again, something we need to be thinking about, but now working with so many different clients, we see lots of different nuances, lots of ins and outs for the holidays that really make us think like, Hey, we want to avoid this if we, if possible. And just trying to help you guys think about where the possible pitfalls, possible opportunities, and definitely walk through the places to avoid issues. Um, just because we don't want to be playing catch up. We don't want to be missing opportunities. And at the end of the day, this is the time of year, this is the time of year where we want to be on our toes more than our heels. So let's walk through some ways we can take the best advantage of that and really come out of the holiday season like flexing a little bit more than feeling a little bit like again a, a little bit compressed because we've we didn't we didn't maximize those opportunities as much as we could. So I'm gonna walk through the nine things that nine things to avoid. So again, number one. This one, I'm I'm guessing you've heard this before, and I've I'm gonna beat this drum consistently. Um, not planning early enough. Um, today is the la today is the the last day you can go without planning. Um, just thinking about this, okay, right now we're recording this in July 2022. Um, I want you to be thinking about this now. So, like again, in August, hopefully you guys are thinking about this and walking through this process. What worked last year? How we, how can we think about what we can do this year? What have we, what's work that we can kind of borrow and, and leverage? How do we kind of incorporate some of that into what we're already doing and really start to get that planning phase in process and start to build a lot of the creative assets you want to be building? Ideally, by the time that November rolls around, you're pressing play on a lot of the efforts you have in place because you've been working to build new templates to get new creative built, um, to get new creative content built to kind of give some different very messages. Those are all going to be things that you are going to be, want to be doing because the earlier you get to that, the less scrambling, the less playing catch up you're going to be doing. And that's where you can really maximize those opportunities and really take advantage of the opportunities that present, present themselves, again, it, through the entirety of the holiday season. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So start now and make it easier on yourself so you're not playing catch up. Everybody always wants to maximize the time, maximize the time, maximize the time. And when you think about it creatively ahead of time, you really solidify those ideas and you get the best ideas out before too late. it's too late to kind of get those into the world. And that's where, yeah, something great does come up. Somebody in your, guys, in your organization has a great idea. You can actually bring that to life because you're not so burdened by all of that creative work you're doing right now. So start planning now, get that calendar together, Get those, get those creative assets built, get those ideas flowing, understand, hey, I want to be doing this in mid, mid August, early September, and really be able to hit the ground running once the holidays start. The other thing that we see clients run into very consistently, um, or not, not necessarily clients, but like see this just in general, but playing it safe and failing to stand out. This is where, this is a time of year where you have to kind of go a little bit farther to the edges than you typically do. This is where you really have to work hard and dig deep to really differentiate yourself. And this is where you need to be thinking, hey, how do I zig when everybody else is zagging? When you're zagging and everybody else is zagging, you're not going to be as relevant and it's not gonna work as well as you want it to. So we see groups do this constantly on email is, hey, um, let's send one email on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, great everybody's inbox is so inundated with so much content in those days it's not worth it it's white noise so understand hey i've got to send more and i've got to get out of my comfort zone and try to again 
send more than I feel comfortable sending it, it sometimes. But that's just because I know that it's going to have to, like, one out of those three are probably going to reach the audience. And the harder I work for it, the more likely I am to actually um, get in front of them. So being willing to be uncomfortable, more sending, get outside your comfort zone in terms of subject lines. Those subject lines are really going to need to stand out. Start having some fun with emojis or really start to, like, take some of the best performing subject lines you have and sit on them and then push them a little bit farther than you normally would. Have somebody who's a little bit more reverent, like poke around with them, make sure it's on brand, but also you want to be eye-catching and engaging. That's where you want to be, again, bar grabbing people's attention fast and leveraging that. Um, also, start borrowing ideas now from other industries. If you're in XYZ industry, borrow some ideas from a parallel industry or something, somebody outside of your space. Those are places where you're going to see something that's going to be different and novel. You're not borrowing ideas from others inside your industry. So hopefully you're going to be able to like take those ideas and bring them into other areas. Um, also, in aligning what you're going to be doing, you can be borrowing ideas from other industries in terms of like how you're going to be driving content in terms of like shopping related content on those on Cyber Black Friday, Cyber Monday or the shopping holidays. Like, are you going to do a um, live shopping feed on Instagram? That's something you can be distributing and sharing through email and also, again, setting times where you can walk through those things in real time and really hopefully be creating some engaging content and also building an audience for that, too. Also, make sure, again, when you want to be standing out, make sure your offers are unique. Those offers need to be some of the largest offers you're going to be offer giving during the course of the year. It, and also, if you're not giving any offers, communicate that early. Make sure that people know that early so they're not like thrown off like, oh, yeah, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, everybody has offers. Um, make sure you communicate that early and hopefully you can level out sales through the course of the month. But communicate early. Make sure you bang that drum. Markdowns also on special products, like maybe like some specific category wasn't available. Um, you want to be doing something different around those times. And that's kind of going to give you a little bit of a, a different lever to pull. And then also limited time products are kind of a, a unique concept. It's, it's probably a way that you can like offer something that's only going to be available in a scarce window of time. That scarcity really drives action. Scarcity, scarcity really kind of pushes a lot of buttons around this time of the year. So that's one of the things you need to be, scarcity and urgency, you need to be leaning on those this time of year. The other area that we, we see people fall flat it's not adjusting their creative. Basically, if you're using the exact same creative, the exact same branding, exact same everything through the course of the year, vary things up a little bit here. Like as you, as a typical like retail store would, like change change things around for the holidays. Like they may put up like a little bit of garland or like jazz things up for the holidays. You don't need to do a lot. Change the header of your emails just for the holidays. It's not a big thing, but it goes a long way in getting people in that mindset of like, hey, how do we how do we decorate our emails for the holidays? Getting them in the mindset of shopping and that buying behavior is, is super important here. Use red for the first time of the year. Do those things that are hopefully going to help them, like, again, connect the dots with a, with a sale or making a purchase. Change the branding. Adjust and change things. The universal content template also in Klaviyo is really going to be a great place to be doing that because you can also adjust the creative inside of all your automations. So if your header is consistent across all of those universal blocks, you can adjust that programmatically in your universal header um, and change it across the board. And that's really kind of a unique way that you can actually make some of your automations customized, which is really, really cool because in the past, you'd have to go in and like adjust and change all of those. This is suddenly a way to do that all at once. And it's going to make it a lot more achievable and a lot more accessible. Um, making sure um, your messaging is going to be relevant, especially to those audiences. Again, Again, messaging relevancy is going to be huge and changing those up. So maybe you're segmenting your, again, purchasers in a specific category or purchasers for a specific use case. Make sure you're going to be doing that so you know that, hey, this is going to be in line with what they're looking for. Sometimes you can be including countdown timers. I wouldn't, again, overdo it, but definitely incorporate one or two of them. Those are really nice. And also includes call out, calls out to sales and that promotion that you're going to be doing on Black Friday, Summer Monday in your automations. Like I said, that universal content block and the universal content template in Klaviyo are really great. We've been working on transitioning all of our clients into those for their automations because we can do some of those cool things where we can incorporate um, a sale or promotion inside of all of our flows programmatically. Anytime those places, those are going to be 
sending. So it gives us a lot of unique opportunities. So the the fourth thing we think we see happen pretty frequently, not varying the message, messaging offers or experience. So when I say not varying it, it's basically doing the same thing over and over and over um, where they don't have any any variance, not doing anything, but not just making it not not making it feel special. So how to do this or how to avoid that. basically thinking about this in terms of what we're going to be doing and the holistic view of our marketing. I like to think about like, how do we lead into the holidays and how do we lead into that Black Friday, Cyber Monday holiday in a really strong, put our, putting our best foot forward. I like to always play the hits before that. So if emails and content has performed really well for you in, during the year, recycle that in that time, share that engaging content again. It's a really kind of an easy way to get people really excited and also engaged in what you're doing. So they're more likely, like you're more top of mind, you're more aware. And then also you can incorporate secondary calls to actions in those. So if you have some want, want to get people over to your VIP list, that's another easy way to do it. So um, during the holidays and during the actual promotions, change your popovers to have them go straight to the sale if they're not new. So like if they're an existing purchaser, and you have a sale collection, like get them to that sale collection as quickly as possible. Um, you want to be getting them over there and actively actively shopping and engaging with it. If you do have special products you want to be offering there, they're unique. Create a holiday collection for those best offers. Like that's a really easy low-hanging fruit way to be like sending them to a collection of products that are really easy for them to purchase around the specific holidays. Um, I always love when people like integrate their e-commerce strategy with email in this time too, like, hey, what's your holiday bundling strategy look like? What's your holiday upsell product strategy look like? And some of those offers, when you're, again, building those, you want to be thinking about how those offers are going to be driving higher AOVs or a more consistent purchases. Also, thinking about how, um, when you are also opening up your list a little bit more. So this time of the year, like, it's you're going to be opening your list up. You have like a group of people that you have a little bit more unengaged, um, like unengaged purchasers, unengaged non-purchasers. You may be going a little bit deeper into your list, into your unengaged segment in this time, and that's fine. We don't want to be doing that too often. Um, I always look at like your unengaged segment as like like going too deep into the unengaged segment. It's like picking up somebody, like trying to trying to meet your spouse at a bar. Um, the later you go in the night, the more desperate and the more in the sketchier that decision gets. So. You don't want to be going too far back in the unengaged segment too often because it's just not a not a sustainable strategy. Every once in a while, you can close down the bar, but you don't want to be doing that too regularly because it, it let's just say it could get weird. So we'll go, we'll leave it with that. Um, that's my bad analogy for the video. This has got to be included in every single video I make. So take it and run with it. Um, <laughs> um, basically, when you're doing that, when you're going deep in your list, they haven't received an email from you a little in a while. I, we like to send plain text emails in a lot of those cases to make sure that deliverability is really strong and hopefully make that call to action really simple and really straightforward. You're not going to be doing that every time, but going deeper and deeper into your unengaged segment, it's just an easy kind of hack to hopefully get through a little bit more guarded walls in terms of getting through, making sure you're going to inbox smooth there. And then one last thing that we always like to, like to include and we like to try is adjusting the timing of your triggered flows. So your if your um, abandoned cart triggers after three hours, maybe you wanna adjust it to trigger after one hour for that weekend. Be a little bit more aggressive, change the level of aggression a little bit more, or change the quickness of that response. Because again, people are doing a lot of things. There's a lot of things, again, fighting for their attention. If you can adjust that trigger, you hopefully can bring them back in while they're still in that same shopping journey and hopefully can, can pull them through. The, the fifth thing we want to get to, not optimizing their calendar. So they may have like a, a big, big, big push around Black Friday, Cyber Monday, but what are they going to be doing the rest of that time? Basically, we want to be thinking about how they can we can maximize that entire two months so we can get the most out of it. So basically, on November 1st, Tuesday, November 1st, we want to be getting people onto our VIP list. We want to be getting people to the VIP list and getting people opted in so they're mentally account, accounting for those that those funds are going to spend with us during that month. We also wanna be offering one or two things probably a week or two ahead of time to offer as some type of incentive in a special category that's marked down in a special like 
promotion that's only going to be available in that window. So we can uh, kind of cushion a little bit of the, the blow we're going to get on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and uh, let our fulfillment team have a little bit of cushion on the other side. Because again, we're hopefully driving, sending a tidal wave their way, but hopefully the tidal wave is not insurmountable. Um, so if you want to cushion that a little bit, that's a smart way to do it. Then again, leading into Black Friday, Cyber Monday, playing the hits, getting your audience engaged and really ready to go. Then about the week before that, maybe off opening things up to your VIP list where they may get a, a early offer or maybe an escalated offer too. Again, treating them like treating them as well as possible. And also when you're building your VIP list, maybe be asking for SMS data too. So you can send them SMS. S this is a time where SMS and email should be, again, they should be just like BFFs. They're playing ping pong with each other, going back and forth, back and forth. And when you can do that really well, you align those two really smoothly. You know that holistic experience is a little bit well more better managed. Then leading into Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you may open things up a little bit early on that, like the Wednesday th or Thursday beforehand, um, like Thursday afternoon after everybody's eating turkey. That's, again, a fine time to be opening things up so everybody can be doing their online shopping as opposed to being having weird conversations with their family that they don't want to see it very often. Um, but during Cyber Monday or during Black Friday, sending more frequently than you feel comfortable doing. That's a really kind of important piece is sending like three, we reckon like three emails on those days. And then on the, on the two, on the Saturday and Sunday, sending two emails. And then on Cyber Monday, sending upwards of three emails. And then basically with all of those getting delivered, um, I know it's going to feel uncomfortable, but you want to be maximizing those days because everyone's inbox is inundated and they're full and this is the only way you can like basically guarantee you're at least going to get seen. Um, and then afterwards, you don't have to be, again, just going radio silent after those days. Find ways to communicate afterwards. What are your top products of the year that you want to be featuring? Like pr top products in specific categories. Like, hey, what are our top boots of the year? What are our top socks of the year? Um, those are easy ways you can incorporate something that they'd be thinking about in terms of gifting in a way that's going to be valuable to your audience and also still good content that's not going to be burning them out. And then again, leading into that December 15th area of the um, free shipping deadline when you want to be really, again, pushing people to make those decisions quicker. And then after, after December 26th or after December 25th, go into like a new year, like a pre new year campaign where the cutoff is new year's day. Um, that's a really nice mental milestone for people that you can kind of lead into and hopefully maximize those second time purchase sales. If you can drag two purchases from some of your holiday purchasers, even 10% of your holiday purchasers, the lot higher volume you're going to be getting in that window. And that's a huge win because, Hey, if we can turn a thousand holiday purchasers into 1,100 holiday purchasers, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a it's a beefy jump. So thinking about that and how we can do that. Um, the, the sixth mistake we see people making is treating everyone the same. So making sure that you're not sending the same message to everybody. It gets boring. It gets old. People are going to disengage. Make sure that that data, that messaging is as customized as possible at times and making sure that it's relevant in terms of that messaging. So if you know if you're purchasing, if somebody's purchasing for themselves or as a gift giver, maybe make vary that messaging a little bit differently. Also, you can be asking for that messaging as part of that like VIP list sign up. If they're going to get early access, they can trade some data for that. That's totally fine. But basically, make, using that data in a forward facing way to again make sure that they're going to be getting the right message is going to be super important. Again, generic messaging is it doesn't help anybody. It's it just not going to work. Um, so making sure that you're going to be segmenting smoothly and strategically. Also, again, collecting data now is not going to hurt you. So you can be getting that built ahead of time. Um, also, segment based on prefer again preferences, collect the VIP list. And then after someone's purchased in that Black Friday, Cyber Monday window, make sure to exclude them through for like the rest of the Black, Saturday, Cyber, Black Friday, Cyber Monday emails you're going to be sending because it's, it's a lot. So don't send too much to them. So again, give them, a, give them a little bit of a break, but then get them with the bounce back automation you're going to be introducing afterwards to hopefully drive that second purchase um, in that holiday window. And that bounce back typically like fires on the Tuesday after Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, and that's like a 48 hour window where they can sh sh spend a customized code that they receive. 
but again, that's to only to your existing purchase to the people who purchased in that window where you're again giving a little bit less than the uh, the large discount you gave for Black Friday Cyber Monday. But it's a really helpful way to do that. Number seven mistake we see people making frequently. This one is this one this one hurts me. This one just kills me. This was one where basically you're not you're you go from zero to forty messages, forty emails in one month. Like you're not sending it all to bam, like every day, but lots of emails. It doesn't work. S warm up your audience. Don't go from zero to zero to forty, zero to six, zero to hundred miles an hour. Start warming up your audience now. Get them used to more sending. Get them used to receiving more emails from you. Get send those engaging emails that are hopefully getting them to open and engage with you ahead of time. So you're not just like that person, like, hey, that friend you haven't seen since high school, like reaching out to you on Facebook, being like, hey, you wanna you do you wanna buy something? No, this is not the way to handle that time of the year. So don't do it. Message ahead of time, get things lined up and, and do that smoothly. The eighth thing we see people people doing at leading into the holidays is not aligning with the other pieces of their marketing. So if part of your email if your email marketing seems differently different than the rest of your marketing during the during the holidays, like that's not a win. You want to be making sure your your email and SMS are a one two punch. Your social and your email are line, in line. Your website lines up with the experience you want to create through. So that holistic user experience, that holistic experience through the holidays for your marketing is going to be where you want it to be. That's where how you want to be thinking about this. That's why planning early helps because you can communicate with different teams, different groups across your organization and really maximize, those, maximize that time. And then the last thing, number nine, this is where... This is the one where this happens every year without fail. And it's always the funniest time of year because I always feel like I'm playing more therapist than anything, but not freaking out on November 10th. This is where everybody, it happens every year without fail. We work to kind of plan and execute a really beautiful, beautiful again, holiday, holiday promotion, holiday rollout, and everybody gets cold feet. Everybody's a coward at the starting line. November 10th rolls around and we're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? What's going on? Because a, a US-based audience, they are so trained for Black Friday, Cyber Monday promotions, they stop buying toilet paper on, 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 on October 31st. So the sales trickle in really slowly around that time. So again, you're bit willed, waiting to build some tension. You're waiting for that tension to pop. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to build that bubble of tension and you're going to pop it with your holiday promotions. But Around that time, it's just hard to trust the process. So this is where those e-commerce entrepreneurs, e-commerce marketers, again, it's a little bit harder to hold things tight. You just gotta, again, be willing to be uncomfortable, be ready to go. We've seen this a million times, we've worked through this, and this is where knowing that this is gonna happen, and again, we've prepared for this, we're ready for this. Those are, those are the things that we really try and work for all year round, and don't, get freaked out too early and start trying to like trying to be a hero or macgyver let that tension build let that promotion do its thing again we're trying to build that over time and it's going to work on the other side once we pop that balloon it's going to have a big blow up as opposed to a small blow up but be comfortable with that a little bit more so we have t nine really detailed things so not not planning early enough playing it safe and not standing out adjust not adjusting creative not varying their messaging offers or experience, not optimizing for their calendar, basically treating everyone the same, not training their audiences, again, to expect more emails, not aligning with other marketing teams or other marketing, again, messaging, and then freaking out on November 10th. So don't do those nine things and you're going to have a successful Black Friday, Cyber Monday holiday. It's not going to be perfect because again, it never is, but doing those things, avoiding those those nine things is going to put you in the best position to thrive around this time and hopefully have some fun, make some sales and, and perform the way you've been waiting for it the entire year. So um, we also have another video on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, just preparing for it, getting ready for it, it where we go through like building a specific calendar. Uh, but hopefully this is helpful. And um, yeah, if you have any more questions, let us know. We love this stuff. And um, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, because um, don't you want more bad marketing analogies and email analogies? So um, if nothing else, this is Robbie Fitzwater. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.